Cool. OK, so thanks for the intro. Um, uh, this time, my talk's a little bit different from how I uh, normally talk about stuff. So afterwards, tell me if you liked it a lot or didn't like it a lot, um, because I'd like to know. So, um, so we're going to be scanning for some scans. Uh, and, and basically, there's this problem I ran into at work uh, that I think is really cool. So I want to share it with you all. Um, so I work on a cryptocurrency. Uh, it's called Coda. Coda um, has this thing, this succinct blockchain. Uh, so you know, a blockchain, it's like a bunch of blocks, and they're connected, sort of. You know, uh, it's like a Git repo. That's how I think about it. But uh, like, whenever you commit to a Git repo, it's like adding a new block to the blockchain. Um, so a succinct blockchain is one that has a constant size. So you can imagine, like, what if your Git repo didn't grow in size every time you committed to it? Um, it's kind of kind of weird. Uh, and the, the way it works is we use this thing called the ZK snark. Um, and that stands for zero knowledge, succinct, non-interactive argument of knowledge. Um, and uh, that probably doesn't tell you much more about it. But um, <laughs> basically, uh, there are these, these proof objects that you construct. They're a bit string. Like, there's a representation for them. And, and they prove statements of the form. There exists stuff, data, such that these properties hold on that data. Um, so for example, you could write a snark uh, pretty easily that says there exists a PDF file such that the hash of the file is you know, a, b, 3, d, f, 3, 3, whatever, right? A hash, OK? Um, and, and what's cool about this, it's uh, if, if a snark is able to be constructed, it's proof that um, the, the PDF ex really exists. Um, so, so it means that I know, if I'm the constructor, I know the PDF file. That's, that's what it means. So, um, so that's, that's kind of cool. And snarks have this property called recursive composition that's also really cool. So, uh, so OK, here's how I think about it. Um, imagine uh, like if I take a picture um, of like a chair, and then I hold that picture of the chair, and then, and then someone takes a picture of me holding the picture. And we do that a bunch of times in a row. Um, in one picture, in one photograph, we can like see that lots of photographs were taken. You know, so so it's kind it's kind of that. Um, but more specifically, like now I can talk about how we use snarks. Um, so we have a blockchain snark that says there exists a proof from the genesis state, that's the first block, all the way up to now. So like a lot of stuff, and there's some new transactions. That's like the stuff inside of the blocks. That's how our cryptocurrency goes. Um, and some consensus metadata, whatever, it doesn't matter, such that the proof verifies you know, that thing that we've done so far. And all the transactions are valid. Um, and all the metadata is consistent. Um, that's basically like what our cryptocurrency does. Uh, and the problem, and, and the reason that I'm talking about all this, is, uh, uh, well, the problem is that snarks are slow to construct. And, and that sort of... Uh, gives us this really interesting problem that has like some functional programming, you know, stuff about it. Um, but uh, so one more thing I need to talk about first, uh, because the snarks are slow, and specifically the all the transactions are valid part is like you know it could be a lot of work. So so we actually rip that out into a different snark. And so what we actually do um, is we have a, a snark that says there exists a proof from the genesis to now and a proof that the transactions change the account state in a certain way. And I'll get into that in more detail. Um, and uh, the consensus metadata uh, you know, exists uh, such that both the proofs verify, that's the recursive bit, and whatever extra metadata we need to do. Um, so the point is, there's two proofs going on, two different types of proofs, okay? transactions and, and blockchain. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to write a lot of LaTeX because uh, we can't express these things in words. There's just too many words, so we're going to draw things. Uh, so sigma, big sigma, means blockchain state. When you see that, it means blockchain state. Okay, um, And inside that, there's an account state. That's a little sigma. And maybe some other stuff, but we don't care about that. So account state, little sigma. Uh, by the way, the, the, it's like a six if you like turn sideways and it, and it shrunk. That's, the, that's little sigma. Okay. Um, so, and, and the account state is, um, like, if there's 10 people that have money in the system, like, and you have $5, I have $5, that's like, that's the account state, okay? Um, so I'm going to write a proof of the blockchain state, 
as uh, an, an implication arrow and then big sigma, okay? And then, uh, and then a transaction, I'm going to write like this to really get across uh, what it is. It's a, it's a state transition of our account state. So we start in account state world zero, where I have $5 and you have $5. If in this transaction I send you a dollar, now I have $4 and you have $6. And that would be like little sigma one, okay? So, so this is like our data, you know? Um, and, and we can turn this into a proof, uh, and we can draw it like that. And now we have a proof that our account state transitioned from zero to one. All right? Cool. Okay. That's enough definitions. And now we can draw a picture using LaTeX. And look at that. Isn't that cool? I love LaTeX. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, so I want to explain this. Um, so we start on the top left. Yes. Yes. Top left. Uh, with a proof that the genesis state is valid of, of our blockchain. And that has an account, account zero inside of it. You can imagine it has an initial account state proof as well. We can take the data that's at the bottom in red or magenta or whatever that is. Wow, that's really, that's really magenta on that screen. On my screen, it's more red. Um, uh, okay. So, so we, we take that and we, we prove that. Uh, and, and we can get a proof from, you know, zero to one, okay? And then we can take that result and combine it with our data to get back a new result that gives us a proof from zero to two. So even though our data tells us how to go from one to two, because we already have a proof going from zero to one, we can combine those together and get a proof that goes from zero to two. With me? Okay. Uh, and then that can flow into the next one that goes from two to three. That's the magenta bit. And we prove it into something that goes from zero to three. Okay, uh, and we do this again, and let's say there were four transactions in one block that I'm adding to the blockchain. Um, at that point, we can fold it into our blockchain proof, um, and then we get the next blockchain proof. So, uh, so this process of like taking the prior result and combining it with some data to get the next result, uh, this is a scan. So um, let's let's quickly talk about that. Uh, so so here's scan on arrays in Swift. Um, it's a function scan. Uh, it has an initial state, u, and uh, a transformation from uh, the u and an element to a u, um, and you get back an array of u's. So uh, it's almost like reduced, but you get the intermediate results as well. So if you look at the top there, I have an example. If we take one, two, three, four, and we scan, we start with zero, and we add. Um, depends how you define scan if you like start with the base case or not, whatever, but we get zero plus one, that's the first thing. 0 plus 1 plus 2, 3. 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, 6. And then all of them, 10. OK? OK. So, uh, so that's scan. All right. But um, I don't like to think about the transactions in this system as an array because it's really, they don't all exist. They're like coming in live. So it's, it's like a stream. And people have already talked about this earlier, which is great. So I don't really have to cover this. But this is like observable or. Uh, Signal or whatever in whatever library you like, RX Swift, React to Coco, whatever, or or really just like the mental model of like asynchronously things are coming in, um, and but we can do the same thing. We can have an initial state and a transformation that takes that state and you know combines it with an element in some way to get back a new state, and and at that point we can emit our result on some other stream. Um, this has a name in the in those libraries, but uh, I can't remember them. But uh, if you if you use them, whatever. It's a scan though. Why isn't it called scan? Mind blowing. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. Maybe it is. Um, so <laughs> let's let, let's look at this again. Uh, so so what's interesting about this uh, process is it's actually there's two scans going on. Um, there's one at the bottom of the transaction states and proofs, and then there's one at the top of the blockchain uh, states. And proofs about them, um, and and uh, I don't know. It's but anyway, you, you can kind of see the scan here, right? Because we're we're taking the result of the prior thing, combining it with the data of the next thing, as we go. All right. Um, <laughs> this is all the background in order to even understand the problem, um, which is that uh, well, the problem in the cryptocurrency sense is we have low throughput in this case because snarks are slow to construct. So uh, if we have bad throughput, then we have a bad cryptocurrency, and that's bad. Uh, if you want to make a cryptocurrency that's good. So, um, <laughs> so, so, so we need to do scan better. Um, and that's, and that's the talk. That's the talk. So, so let's, let's, uh, 
plan to scan for some scan that's more efficient. Um, and I just talked about the problem. Uh, we're we're going to talk about more properties and requirements of, of this specific system. Uh, I think it's cool. Let's see if other people think it's boring later. But I think it's cool. And and but what's really cool is you if you find like algebraic properties in your in your thing, then like you know maybe we could take advantage of that. Hint, you know. Uh, so <laughs> and and uh, and then once we have that all figured out, then we can iterate on on solutions. We can we can start with like maybe the obvious thing, and then and then see if we can massage it over and over and over again until we get some really efficient, cool data structure that solves this problem fast, uh, for whatever definition of fast uh, that I'm about to tell you. So, but first, OK, let's talk a little bit more about the properties of our system here. Um, so uh, transaction proofs and blockchain proofs are slow. OK, really understand that. They're slow. Um, let's say that they take the same amount of time just to make things easy. Um, and we'll say it costs time one. All right. Uh, transactions, let's say that they arrive at some constant rate, um, and let's just say it's R, like R per unit time, okay? Um, and in some of the pictures I'm going to show you, I'm going to say like R is 2 here, and then you can, you know, substitute 2 in for R. But like this is how fast transactions are coming in. Like people are actually using our, our thing, you know? Um, and also, there's this really interesting property of this particular operation, but also other operations. Um, where the, the proof work uh, can actually be done by other, other nodes in the network. And, and the, the cryptography is like so awesome that uh, even if you don't trust that person who's doing the work, you can still, like the fact that they were able to make one of these snarks um, means that they're not lying. Uh, and, and you can also build some like efficient marketplace out of that, but it doesn't matter. Um, the point is, we can pretend that we have infinite cores OK, so one more thing. All right, we can merge proofs. Like, why not, right? Because they're recursive. So, or like you can recursively embed them. So we can say, suppose I have a proof that takes me from 0 to 1 and a proof that takes me from 1 to 2. I can create a new proof that takes me from 0 to 2. All right, great. Um, and now, it's associative. Oh my god. OK, uh, so, so at the top here, um, you see uh, we're, we're, we're trying to create a proof from state 0 to state 3. OK, um, and, and on the left, in, in green, we do it uh, by, by breaking down uh, you know, the, that proof into 0 and 2 and 2 and 3. OK, and then we break apart 0 and 2 into, into two pieces. On the other side, we, we break, a, break it apart into 0 and 1 and 1 and 3. And we break that apart into two pieces. Um, and these are equivalent. You know, I'm hand-waving, but it's associative. Okay? And associativity has this cool property of like, giving you free parallelism. Or like saying, hey, you could parallelize if you wanted to. So, uh, so what if we instead do something like this, where we lay out all of our data at the bottom of a tree, and then we like do some stuff up a tree, and only emit from our scan when we hit the top of a tree. Um, and don't stare at this too much. I'm going to go into it differently later. Um, but I'm sorry that this is like pushing down. Uh, so just like stretch above the person in front of you to see the, the code there. But um, so we're going to start at the bottom. Uh, you can imagine that there's this periodic scan operation that, uh, that, that takes, let, let's say it's generic over p. It takes a starting state. Um, it takes a function that lifts your, your data into, into P. Um, so for us, it's like taking a transaction and lifting it into a proof of just whatever that transaction did to the state. And, and a merge operation that's associative. And the merge for us is like merging the proofs. Um, and, and, and then, you know, as that picture showed, you can imagine like laying it, laying them at the bottom of a tree and, and sort of only emitting at the top. So at, at the top of this slide, I have a little example here. Um, what if you know we have an array, let's say, and we do this periodic scan operation? Um, if we start at zero, uh, we um, pretend that uh, lift actually was the identity function. That was a mistake, but um, I added this like five minutes ago. So uh, <laughs> then, then you know, imagine we only emit every other time or something. That, that's what I'm saying here. It's like periodically we're emitting. Okay, cool. 
Some requirements. Uh, we want to maximize throughput. That's the whole point of this thing. Um, but we also want to minimize latency because otherwise, if it takes you like a week to know that I sent you a dollar, not super useful. Um, and we want to minimize state size. Uh, so, uh, like if we're if we're sharing this work to a bunch of nodes across a network, um, we don't want to like send a lot of data. Um, and and this is sort of the order of priority. Like we care most about maximizing throughput. All right. Cool. Um, and then I'm going to abstract away some of the sigmas because it's getting crazy already. Uh, so D is data instead of this transaction thing. Um, then there's the base proof. That's B. And, uh, and there's a merge proof, and that's M. And then, and then that thing at the top with the blockchain states and blockchain proofs, that's just A. Okay. Um, and then, and then we can, we can make the, the tree thing, uh, with, and understand it a little bit more easily. So, um, the question though is, like, how do we make this tree and how does it interact with the transactions that are coming in in real time? Um, and that is how we will iterate on our, uh, solution. So, let us iterate. Um, okay, so assume R is 8. It is 8. Um, so in one step, we've received 8 pieces of data, 8 transactions, and we're going to lay them out at the bottom of a tree instead of folding them into our, into our blockchain proof. Um, then we're going to take a step, and we have infinite cores, infinite parallelism, so we just can take a step and all at once prove all of this. Um, and, and the transactions that are coming in, well, we just have to hold those back because we're not ready for them yet. Um, but we, we did eight pieces of work at the same time. Great. The next layer, we can do four pieces of work. But, uh, so, so the work we do got halved. Um, but, but, you know, and we still can't queue any more data. Uh, and we can do this again and again. And then when we get to the top, we can fold it into our, into our top, uh, you know, our A, whatever. Um, and then, and then take the data that we've accumulated and add it to the bottom of some other tree and do the whole process again. And we can repeat this forever. Um, so, so if you compare this to the first solution where we just like fold one transaction at a time, um, we have higher throughput here. Uh, in in uh, time proportional to log of the data at the bottom, like in this case four, um, uh, we've we've uh, done the work of eight transactions. So so our throughput is higher, um, but our latency is higher. I mean that in the sense before we folded a transaction in and like we knew about it, you know, at that point. Um, but we, we don't necessarily know uh, for a while if, you know, what the result is. Uh, and, and state size increased. So, uh, but it's a little bit better. There's a problem here, okay, um, that I sort of alluded to. Parallelism is halved at every layer as you go up the tree. Um, and, and, and that's, like, not ideal. Um, we're, we're, we're not handling data as fast as it's coming in, okay? Um, and this is the thing that... Uh, you can imagine one could spend time on a whiteboard trying to like draw things and figure out for a while. Uh, and then maybe you come up with this. So um, let's say, uh, let's say that you always try and use data as soon as it comes in. And that's like, we're always going to use it, okay? So, and we're also going to try and do as much work as possible at the same time. Um, there's kind of these two things playing. And I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through a trace of that. So, so let's say R is 2. And what you're looking at are the first two steps. This is kind of a special case. We just lay out data. All right. Then I can do work. You can do four pieces of work, and I add two pieces of data. OK? And I'm drawing these in separate colors because they're separate trees. Um, and then I can do, now I can do, uh, again, four pieces of work, two merge proofs, two base proofs, and in Q, two pieces of data. Still four pieces of work. And then I can do, again, uh, this time, yeah, four pieces still, and and this time we finish a tree, so we can fold it into our our top level, uh, our top level, you know, a thing, uh, and we still add two pieces of data. So we now un we now have the information of like inputs one through four as we're adding nine and ten, um, and and we can continue this process. We're done with that first tree. Now we have like an a one floating around, um, and and we again can do uh, four pieces of work, and we again merge with the top, and, and this process repeats over and over again. Um, and, and what's interesting is it's every other step we get to merge up with the top. So, so throughput is way up. Um, and what's interesting is this, even though I showed it with r equals 2, this works for any r, 
uh, that's that's a power of two. Um, and and uh, and you you just like extend the base of your tree, you know. So so this is this is like a pretty cool way to do a scan, I think, uh, because latency is the same as the other tree-based one. Um, and the the only the only downside is we increase the state that we have to keep. Uh, and the actual the number of incomplete trees we have to hold on to is curiously uh, log of the number of leaves of one of the trees. Weird, so cool, you know. I don't know, whatever. So, so like, if if you're if you have a thousand leaves, you have to keep ten trees uh, in 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 your state. Okay. So, uh, what if what if we could do better though? You know, because if we look really closely, we're not using a lot of the information in the in the trees. Um, like once we've once we've looked at our the children, um, the things below us, we don't need that information anymore. So, so we can, uh, we can, we can ignore that, right? We, we don't need to store it. Um, so the red is what I'm talking about, by the way. Uh, and then of course the things above us that we haven't computed yet, we don't need to store because there's nothing, we don't have anything to, to do. So, um, so if you look closely, there's, uh, only a little bit of data needed at each layer of the tree. In, they're in different trees, but they're, you know, <laughs> they're at different layers if you were to like label the layers amongst all the trees. And so we should just overlay the trees. Um, and so now what you're looking at is the frontiers of the virtual log n trees all overlaid on top of each other as one tree. Um, and so, so at the top layer, uh, well, we're folding it into the A, but the top is, you know, the merge from the first tree, which is 9 to 12. And the next one is like 13 and 14. And the next one is like the bases, 15 and 16. Um, and, and there's holes in the tree of where we didn't have information, and we can use that as space to accumulate partial information. So, um, so when we take a step, everything moves up. And uh, before, we had a merge 13, 14. Um, that like, gets included as part of the root node, whatever. Um, <laughs> it's not super important, but basically we overlaid the trees. So, so we didn't change throughput from the last solution, and we didn't change latency, because we didn't change the process that goes on. It's still like, you know, we still do the, the work as if there were that many trees, but we decrease the state size. So we're, we're getting closer to our optimal, efficient, periodic scan, weird operation that happens to be what we wanted in this case. Um, but we can do better. Um, we can shrink size more. Uh, we, we don't need to store like data and, and like base proofs at, in separate levels. We can actually like change the way that we think about it and store uh, a holder for incomplete work. So like at the, at the leaves here, we have like holes that will become base proofs and like maybe will be filled in with data. On the next layer, we have a merge proof that uh, has base proofs in it, so it can be completed. Um, and at the top, we have like a merge that will be completed containing the, the two merges inside of that. Um, and and that, that, that just lets us you know, remove a layer of the tree. So we have exactly uh, two, you know, what is it? It's, it's the number of leaves. Uh, two to the log of that. No, it's the depth. I, I'm so tired. I'm very jet lagged. <laughs> but basically, it's the size of a normal binary tree with with four leaves. Um, and two n minus one. That's it. Two times the number of leaves minus one. That's how many nodes we have to store. Okay. And then and then we can do the crazy coolest thing ever um, that I think is super interesting. I don't know if it is, but you can represent that as an array. So in, in your, uh, if you took a data structures class in university or read a book about it or something, you may have read about heaps. Um, and what they're talking about are implicit heaps, uh, which is you, you take your what is like tree-ish and you write it down as a, just a flat buffer. And you can figure out your parents by, at some index, dividing by two. Uh, I have like little arrows showing what the parents are. Um, but this way, you don't have to store pointers. And you don't have to pointer jump because everything's just in a contiguous buffer. Uh, so it's, it's super, super efficient. Um, and there's this whole field of computer science called succinct data structures. Uh, and the Wikipedia page is really interesting. If you haven't seen it, like, you should totally look at it. I have a link to it at the end. Um, it's crazy. Like, it's mind blowing. Okay. Uh, and yeah, and, and so this is like, this is now like a good solution. It's very small and high throughput, uh, decent latency. So, uh, but you might be thinking, hey, I don't make a cryptocurrency. Maybe this like doesn't matter to me. But uh, I think there's actually other, there's a bunch of other applications of this. Um, uh, 
one of them that I could think of, like imagine there's like a Hubble, the Hubble telescope or whatever the next Hubble is. Um, that's streaming back data. Some of these telescopes are streaming back data at like terabytes per second. Um, so terabytes per second, like that's a lot. Um, so, uh, but, and maybe you have to update some like model of the universe uh, as data is flowing in. And it's like always flowing in, like it's real life. Like footage is just coming. So, so you need to handle all that footage and like process it. So you can imagine, like we, this is a good fit for the periodic scan. Um, as long as your operation is associative, um, uh, lots of matrix stuff is, right? You know, um, you can like, you can take a bunch of data frames of, of your like terabyte thing and combine them in a parallel cluster. And uh, maybe this is what they do. I don't know. Uh, that'd be cool. Uh, then there's also like, imagine, uh, if you wanted to analyze live stream footage, that's just like frames are being spit at you at 60 frames per second, let's say. Um, and maybe you want to track the motion of some object or do some sort of, uh, some sort of detection across, across frames um, and, and have some model that you update. Uh, you can imagine you know, doing that in this periodic scan fashion as well, where you, you sort of buffer a bunch of frames, you put them at the bottom of a tree, and you as you get new frames, you're like always adding to a new tree as you're completing the prior tree. Um, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so we, we scanned for a scan. Uh, well, first we like realized we needed a scan um, in the context of cryptocurrency. Uh, and, and then um, we, we talked more about like properties of, of these proofs and, and properties that uh, associativity and stuff that we can abuse to, to get cool data structures. Uh, and then some requirements for like things that we want to optimize, um, and then we and then we iterated, and and I think this is like a pretty good way to, to do stuff because uh, you you start with like maybe the obvious thing like let's make a tree out of our data, and then you're like oh maybe we need log many trees of that thing, uh, you know, and then you can try and compress it. Uh, so so it's functional programming because scan is like a functional operation, right? So that's <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Um, how do you how do you define trust or authority? Um, I assume you're referring to uh, how do we trust that the work is being done properly in this case, or? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll talk, I'll briefly cover this, but uh, and okay. Uh, what's it called? A caveat: I'm not a cryptographer, but I am trying to learn it. So some of what I'm saying might be like somewhat, you know. Whatever, but here's here's my understanding. Uh, so these snarks, uh, the snark construction is uh, amenable to this thing called a signature of knowledge, um, and a signature of knowledge, uh, it's kind of like a signature in the like public key cryptography sense, which is like you know, <laughs> which I don't want to get into. But here, here's what signature of knowledge does: it lets you embed a string of information, a bit string, which you could say you say here's my public key for this thing. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it, it combines that with the proof in some way that, uh, makes it, uh, unforgeable. Um, which, that's the authority aspect, maybe. Um, and then the, uh, the trusting aspect, the snark construction, um, you, you cannot, there, it, the math is like really crazy, but like, it, essentially, you compute this matrix of like your properties that you want to prove. Um, that, re that represents the properties. And then a bunch of stuff happens to the matrix to output this bit string. And if, if the, if the proof doesn't actually verify, like if, if the thing that you're proving, uh, doesn't, doesn't, uh, isn't what you're trying to do, then like the actual math will fail. Um, and so it, you won't be able to construct a bit string that when you send it to someone, they can run this like, you know, matrix multiplication on and some other crazy stuff to verify it. I recommend, uh, if you want to really read like six hours on this, or a hundred hours, the six hour solution, um, there's a series of blog posts by Vitalik uh, Buterin uh, on the Ethereum blog called Exploring ZK Snarks, something like that. It's six parts. Um, and you can work through that, and you can literally do the problems on pencil, 
uh, and 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 understand how everything works. And it's it's kind of cool. Uh, there's also um, a 60-page paper that requires a lot of cryptography background to understand. Uh, that's if you Google cycles of elliptic curves, you'll find that. Um, I've not been able to understand that paper yet. So, uh, but if you if you have a background in elliptic curve cryptography, you will probably. So, is that okay? I'll, I will talk about my blockchain out of the context of in this situation. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you after about it. Yeah, I don't want to derail the, you know, functionalness. Um, do you see this as just a scam operator and the stack that's Yeah, the, um, yeah, uh, it could. The, the thing, the thing about it, uh, so what I didn't talk about is the implementation of this. And I do have an implementation of this, not in Swift. Uh, but uh, it's like very big because, well, you know, you have to, and, and, it, and a lot of decisions have to be made that, uh, you know, other people may make different decisions depending on the, the thing that you do. For example, like how do you, how do you uh, distribute the work? Like you, you could have it just paralyze across cores on your machine, but I don't think you'll see a win with that sort of parallelism until we get to a point where we have many, many, many cores. Uh, and then the, but, but the notion of like, hey, you give an associative merge and a lift operation, um, and, uh, and, and in the same sense that uh, one of the earlier speakers showed the reducer where uh, you, you have like an A, like just a next function with like a state, uh, you could kind of imagine building something similar for like periodic scan where like your next function gives you like an option where like sometimes it produces the next thing, sometimes it gives you nil. Um, uh, but to answer your question, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know of, I don't know. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Yes. Um, the question was, uh, where uh, did is this being used anywhere else, and where did where did uh, I get this algorithm or whatever? Um, and can Bitcoin use this thing? The can Bitcoin use this thing is, I think the answer is no for like other weird reasons, but we can talk about it more after. Um, the other two things. Uh, I swear I tried very hard to find a prior art on this. Like as soon as we as soon as we realized the problem was uh like scanning over an online stream of information, I was like, someone has to have done this before. I still believe someone has done it, and I just don't know how to search for it. I'm sure there are papers on this, but uh we couldn't find any. Uh so so this is this is the approach that we came up with. Um so because of that, uh I definitely believe that like People are doing something that solves this problem in some way, but I don't think they're doing this approach necessarily. Thanks. Cool. So uh, at the, in the next break, gather in the, the back corner if you want to talk more about the blockchain-y part. <laughs>